Good evening to all and welcome to the session, the Hindu Editorial Analysis for Proficiency in English. Today's editorial is an important editorial. It deals with climate crisis and what action has to be taken by all the nations together. You may get something like this in the exam as a passage. As I said, this is about climate crisis, an important one. Let us start with the tone of the passage. The tone of the passage can be characterized as concerned and critical. Obviously, anything related to environment, you have to think of the word concerned and uh, critical. What is being done, whether it is right or wrong. It expresses concern about the state of climate crisis and insufficient progress made in addressing it. Based on a concern about the crisis and based on the action of progress, critical. The passage is critical of the lack of significant action and the failure to meet emissions targets despite acknowledging the magnitude of the crisis. On the one hand, the magnitude, to what extent it is a problem, has been acknowledged, but uh, they could not meet the targets. It also calls for genuine breakthroughs and emphasizes the need for more ambitious action and support to tackle the climate crisis effectively. Good evening to all of you. And today, I, I haven't started with editorial vocabulary. While doing the analysis, I will underline important words. Already you see those words in a different color. I'll give the meanings. Let's see how it goes. Stop taking the calamity. There are two words over here. One is stop taking. Stop take is a word that could be a noun or a verb. Actual meaning of the word stock take, it means to assess the stock of a particular business. But in this context, context it means to assess the situation related to climate crisis. Stock take is nothing but looking at the present scenario, looking at the present situation. Business context, it talks about assessing the stock but in this context, assessing the situation related to climate crisis. Calamity, we have got this many a time. Calamity, part of speech, uh, noun. What does it mean? An incident or event that causes major damage. You can also think of the word disaster. Calamity means what? Disaster. And you have to recollect words like, very good, catastrophe, an important word. You should also recollect the word mishap, a natural disaster, all these words. On climate crisis and the UN Global Stock Take Report. This is based on the editorial, the stimulus, based on a particular report, and it is uh, United Nations Global Stock, Stock Take Report. Based on the report, what the report says, and what action has to be taken by all the stakeholders uh, you can also have a means of damage. Hmm. The, what is the main idea of this editorial? The world needs genuine breakthroughs in climate talks. As it is about climate crisis, they have to go in for climate talks. And when it comes to climate talks, the editorial opines, the world needs what? Genuine breakthroughs. Breakthrough again, a noun. What does it mean? It means sudden major development. This is an important word in the sense, I'm sure you all know the word breakthrough. We got a breakthrough. But common error, a lot of people say, we got a major breakthrough. Major breakthrough is not correct. Why is it not correct? Tell me. Breakthrough means sudden major development. Already the word major is there. Then you can also major breakthrough. Breakthrough is a major thing. So it is nothing but redundancy. This is a common error. Never say major breakthrough. A breakthrough means major development. So we should not use the word major before breakthrough. Main idea is uh, crystal clear. Genuine breakthroughs in climate talks. The climate crisis, as I said, this editorial is all about climate crisis intricately wove intricately part of speech you have to tell what part of speech is it it is an adverb 
intricately adverb and coming to this is a verb but is it in present form or past form or past participle form if you take this verb uh, we wove woven it is in past form the climate crisis intricately wove itself into intricate means a deeply in this context intricate usually goes with the word design if you use a word intricate then it is an ad adjective the typical combination intricate design and something very meticulous very clear and they focus on the minutest details and design something if you take uh, in the past sculptures they you would see the sculptures with the necklace or whatever the jewelry intricately designed intricate design or designs an important word but wove means got entangled here you can also think of the word weave get into entangle or form be part of something be part of something intricately wove itself a reflexive or emphatic pronoun into what it takes a preposition into into the g20 summit in delhi now it is it became part of g20 summit that's what the sentence means particularly during the discussions on clean energy sustainable development and the collective responsibility necessary to avert it there's a crisis and whenever there is a problem whenever there is a crisis we try to avert avert is an important word avert is a, a verb it is a regular verb that means what is the past form avert averted averted means to prevent one meaning and to avoid another meaning but you have to know the usage what is the usage if you take avert imagine uh, uh, some terrorists they are planning something they want to uh, do something and the police come to know then police averted we say imagine the terrorists could not were not successful because at the right time police averted the plan avert means avoid an important word usually it goes with the police terrorists and here whenever there is a problem you have to avert the problem means prevent or avoid here what is the problem the climate crisis he talks about now it is part of g20 summit and uh, deeply involved with g20 summit particularly during the discussions on clean energy sustainable development and collective responsibility there are three dimensions how to avert this climate crisis one we need clean energy because climate change climate crisis air pollution because of fossil fuels now we talk about two terms you all have to know you may get as a passage one is conventional sources of energy or non renewable sources of energy the other one non conventional sources of energy or renewable sources of energy clean energy comes under non conventional and renewable like hydro power uh, solar power wind power all these and conventional non renewable fossil fuels and when we we talk about the environment we talk about sustainable development sustainable goals sustainable practices means what using the resources wisely and uh, climate crisis is a global problem based on that you have to we can use the expression collective responsibility it is not the responsibility of a particular country it is a responsibility collective responsibility all the hand should be on the deck only then it is going to be possible now it comes to the report what is the report i said it is a stock take the united nations global stock take a report that was released that was released which tense is this it is a past tense passive voice they released active voice was released passive voice that was released just ahead of the g20 meet ahead of something an important phrase ahead of the meeting ahead of the conference ahead, ahead of something ahead of the g20 meet set out means make to make something ready set out the scope of challenges scope of challenges there are so many challenges what is the scope here you can think of the word a range a range of challenges that awaited 
I waited an important word. Immediately you have to become alert and you have to recollect two words. One is wait for, waiting for someone or something. And what is the other word here, await? Thinking of uh, wait for, people try to use a pattern, await for. But await does not take the preposition for. Wait for something and await something. Don't use a preposition for. It has been given in many exams, important. That awaited the major economies of the world, even as it presented the little beyond what is already known. This talks about a particular report. And uh, the report has set out the scope of challenges that awaited the major economies of the world. But there is a problem. What is a problem? Even as it presented little beyond, here little, there are three forms you have to think immediately. One is a little, means almost nothing, hardly anything. It has a negative connotation. Second, a little, means at least to some. Third, the little means whatever is there or specific and here very good i appreciate that little means nothing beyond what is already known we know something and nothing more or what is already known it means something like old wine in a new bottle nothing new same old stuff presented at the right time this stock take is to stock take here has been used as a noun and this is a demonstrative pronoun, a demonstrative adjective. This stock take is to serve. This is an important pattern. What is this pattern? It doesn't go with any of the tenses. If you take uh, English language, I have said many a time, it has 350 patterns. When you learn grammar, perhaps you learn about 120 patterns. What about the remaining patterns? Other patterns uh, we don't need, they go with professionals. They go with writers and one pattern, I am to do something or he is to do something. It, what does it mean? It means based on some arrangement, based on some agreement, you are supposed to do something. I am, I am to deliver a speech. He is to submit the report. So here the stock take is to serve. Do remember an important pattern. And this is active voice. Imagine how does it change? Passive voice, not easy to handle. She is to write a letter, active voice. A letter is to be written by her, passive voice. Serve as what? As a template means a ground, it is providing the groundwork or the base. Template goes with design. Template means the base to guide discussion ahead of the 28th conference of parties scheduled in Dubai this November and is meant to be an official reckoning of the work actually done by countries since 2015 in stemming greenhouse gas emissions. A very lengthy sentence, but uh, in a nutshell, what does it mean? What is the purpose of this stock take report? It is to serve as a template, the base to guide a discussion ahead of a particular event. What is that event? 28th conference of parties scheduled in Dubai this November and is meant to be an official reckoning of the work and it is support reckoning an important word take uh, uh, consider something very seriously think seriously by an official to be an official reckoning of the work actually done by countries since 2015 countries have been doing when it comes to climate crisis they have been doing since 2015 and uh, this report, they reckon of the work actually done by countries since 2015. Work related to what? Stemming. This is an important word. You got to listen very carefully. I am sure you all know the word stem. Which part of speech is it? Noun. But stem can also be a verb. And why is this important? As a verb, it can be. It has a positive meaning, it has a negative meaning. What is a positive meaning? Stem means uh, to generate something, generate something. And stem also means to contain. Here contain means uh, control. In this context, it means control, contain. In stemming greenhouse gas emissions, means in controlling greenhouse gas emissions, an important meaning, and many students don't know stem as a verb two different meanings one is positive the other one is negative 
that here signatories an important word part of speech noun uh, usually literal meaning a person who signs a an agreement this is what the literal meaning says but in this context in place of person you can think of the head of a country either the president or the prime minister and signing not simply an agreement a treaty related to climate or some other terrorism any of these the person is called signatory singular plural signatories that here signatories to the un convention on climate change agreed in paris to keep everyone knows this to keep global emissions from rising beyond 2 degrees celsius and the target is 1.5 and as far as possible limited to 1.5 degrees celsius this is the actual target now though it acknowledge though it acknowledge acknowledges some headway though it acknowledges accepts some headway headway means what part of speech uh, noun headway means make progress make progress acknowledges what some headway some progress the world as of now is emitting gases in a manner that will certainly overshoot the paris agreed limit overshoot what does the sentence mean there is some progress and uh, we accept that or they accepted that but present scenario the emitting if you look at uh, emission of gases they, are, they have been emitting or is emitting gases in a manner this talks about the world the world as of now is emitting gases in a manner important phrase that will certainly overshoot the paris agreed limit that means it will, it will go beyond 2 per 2 degree celsius or 1.5 degree celsius the report unequivocally at the outset you can tell the part of speech which part of speech is it adverb but generally we use equivocal equi means a two then it is not clear equivocal means ambiguous vague not clear and what is opposite of equivocal unequivocal that is adjective form what is the adverbial form unequivocally means not vague not ambiguous crystal clear the report unequivocally states that much more ambition in action and support is necessary the report says or states much more ambition more the country should be more ambitious and uh, much more ambition in action and support is necessary is a must also you can say for implementing domestic mitigation where is it required more ambition in action and support is necessary for implementing domestic mitigation and we have got so many times the word mitigate whenever we come across this i give the words like uh, mitigate alleviate and uh, suage uh, reduce the extent of the problem or the magnitude of the problem mitigation measures to reduce global ghg emissions by 40% by 2030 60% by 2035 and reach net zero carbon co2 emissions by 2050 globally these are the targets based on current information based on current information submitted by countries the emissions gap consistent with 1.5 degrees celsius in 2030 is estimated to be 20.3 billion tons 23.9 billion tons of co2 that means what they are short of reaching the target and there is a gap there are gaps based on that these gaps are unlikely to be filled unlikely chances are bleak unlikely to be filled without a rapid upscaling upscaling means uh, spending more on renewable energy sources and an estuary an important word we have come across for the first time in the recent past i suppose means uh, refrain one word you can think of and you have to remember the prepositional combination you can also you can think refrain refrain means what to control one meaning to keep away another related word abstain 
refrain from using something in this context uh, they have to cut down using fossil fuel resources such as coal oil and natural gas so what does it mean there are gaps to meet the target 1.5 degrees celsius but uh, gaps are there not easy to fill the gaps unlikely and uh, when is it going to happen without if they go in for rapid upscaling of renewable energy sources then it may happen on the one hand on the other hand they should refrain from using fossil fuel resources like coal oil and natural gas however despite several acknowledgement by world leaders most recently at the g20 of the magnitude of the crisis whenever we talk about a particular problem we use magnitude what is the magnitude of the problem means what is the size dimension scope range magnitude they admitted many a time little has been achieved means nothing has been achieved in terms of energy transition from non uh, conventional to non conventional from non renewable to a uh, renewable uh, i will i will do that who is this uh, varsha please wait for one or two days maximum two days today is what monday before wednesday you will get uh, something a uh, news important uh, announcement G20 countries account for 93% of global operating coal power plants and 88% of prospective ones we are talking about stopping or depending on uh, uh, fossil fuels but already 93% of global operating coal power plants and 88% of prospective ones prospective means they are going to come up in future the G20 leaders this is an important one whenever you come across uh this talks about possessive case possessive case is an important rule what is it it goes with common errors a lot of people when you see a board or a banner you see something like a boys hostel or look at the apostrophe girls hostel is this right or wrong 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 why here we are not talking about one boy one girl hostel belongs to many boys hostel belongs to many girls based on that what is a noun here boys here we have a noun that ends in the letter s whenever a plural noun ends in the letter s we have to use the apostrophe after the letter s not before here ha huh, very good it is this these are not correct and here leader singular means it is not about plural noun it is about singular noun leaders declaration formally recognize a need for 5.8 to 5.9 trillion us dollars in the pre 2030 period required for developing countries as well as 4 trillion us dollars per year for clean energy technologies by 2030 to reach net zero by 2050 here it talks about clean energy technologies clean energy technology is there with the developed nations the western countries they have to do what we call technology transfer and for that money is required once we get the technology to start uh, something related to renewable sources of energy money is involved technology transfer is involved only then all these targets can be met the report also dwells an important word we have got many a time answer my question the word dwell is it a noun or a verb generally you may say it's a verb but actually it can be a noun the word form changes dwelling dwelling is a noun what does it mean place where someone lives the place where someone lives reside very good but in the western world if you take this word has become outdated generally we use this word in the plural form dwellings it has become outdated but here usually i give two important idioms one some people they always think of the past and that is of no use then we say don't dwell on the past here you have to focus on the preposition we also say don't brood over the past don't brood over the past I mean don't think too much about your past you get nothing 
Here dwells means to think seriously. They spend some time. The report also dwells on, deals with after spending a lot of time. On the need to reverse deforestation. What is the opposite of deforestation? Afforestation and the adoption of electric vehicles. So what is the solution to cut down, the, uh, to deal with climate crisis and uh, to deal with uh, dependence on fossil fuels? One is uh, reverse deforestation. The other adoption of electric vehicles as vital prongs, vital adjective. We have got many a time, important, crucial, vital, indispensable. And uh, imperative also you can use, but the usage changes. Prong means dimension. Here I would like to give one expression. Imagine there is a problem. Then we say the government has taken a multi-pronged approach. Have you heard of this expression? Multi-pronged approach means what multi-dimensional approach multi-pronged prong means dimension vital prongs important dimensions to a clean energy economy however it does not single out individual countries it talk the, the report talks about the solution what is the solution reverse deforestation and electric vehicles however contrasting information it does not single out it does not point out individual countries or provide a more granular analysis. I usually use one word when it comes to reading a sentence, I say you have to read meticulously. Meticulously means looking at the minutest details. Granular analysis also means the same. Looking at the minute details. Granular analysis, meticulous analysis of where the existing shortcomings are. Right now, some, some shortcomings are there and where the existing shortcomings are in the approach adopted by countries. Countries adopted an approach, but there are some shortcomings. Where are they? And what is this approach? Why? What is objective to curtail emissions? Curtail is also a verb. It's a regular verb. Means what? To restrict or to control curtail curtailment restriction the stockton report however must not be dismissed as yet another technical document they should not look at it as another technical document and here there is one important expression must not be dismissed it is in passive voice uh, you can also use the word curb pandu very good during the upcoming climate talks it must form the basis of negotiations. The template for negotiations means talks to aid. Aid means what? Help. It can be uh, aid, can be a verb, can be a noun. Aid the discovery and adoption of genuine breakthroughs. Only then they can get a solution or solutions. That's all about this editorial. Coming to Reading comprehension skill questions based on this editorial. What is the purpose of the UN, uh, United Nations Global Stock Take Report mentioned in the passage? What were the goals agreed upon in the 2015 UN Convention on Climate Change in Paris? An important uh, convention. It happened or took place way back in 2015 and where Paris. How does the current global emission rate compare to the limit set in the Paris Agreement? What are the emission reduction targets mentioned in the passage for 2030, 2035, and 2050? What actions are identified as necessary to fill the emissions gap? Passage talks about the gap and meet the 1.5 degrees target. What percentage of global coal power plants do G20 countries account for as stated in the passage? Easy to answer, but what matters here, how you frame your answer, and uh, that is what going to show to what extent you have comprehended and to what extent you have command over the language. Let us go to practice questions. Some are easy, some are difficult. The first set, as usual, error location. I read the first one and try to spot the error. People whose performance peaks in the morning are better positioned for career success because they are more proactive, an important word, 
than people who are at their best in the evening. A lengthy sentence, you have to understand the context, then exposure to the language, you will be able to spot the error. Your grammar knowledge does not help. This is based on something like uh, standard expression. What is it? Standard expression. Not at better, Hema Siddharthapa says, are in or inner that you have to complete tapa you got it right almost here there's an error in the second part what is what is wrong with the second part people whose performance peaks in the morning are in a better position usually we say someone is well settled then generally i'm talking he is in a better position in a better position, a standard expression. That's why I said, you can answer this based on your exposure to the language. They are in a better position for career success because they're more proactive. You all should be proactive. Tell me what is the meaning of the word proactive? Tomorrow you take up the job at the workplace, the management expects employees to be proactive. Proactive means to take the initiative, to take, the initiative before someone tells you you take the initiative then you we say you are proactive imagine there's a particular situation you wait for the manager for his orders or what to do what not to do but based on the situation you know this is better if you do immediately before someone tells you you do that then it means you're proactive an important word let us go to question number two the economic structure of rural areas is such that children, especially girls, are required to help in the household work and perform also their, this is an important word. It sounds a little different when it comes to pronunciation. First, you try to answer. Because the Hindi word means something else. Has anyone answered this? Very good. Anusha is the first one and she got it right. The economic structure of rural areas, a phrase, subject, is such that, such that children, especially girls, plural, are required to help in the household work, nothing wrong so far, so good, and perform also there. Here, also perform. Where should you use the word also? And also perform their chores. Hindi word chore means what? A thief. But English word, your daily activities, we use this word. Uh, this is based on correct placement. The right word, but not properly placed. And also perform. That is the correct one. Go to question number three. Yes, thief. Thief, British English, we all use that word. But what is the American word? Americans don't use the word thief. They use the word burglar. Thief, British, burglar, American. Even after so much years of independence, women in India continue to suffer socially as well as economically at different levels and in different forms. Very good. Within no time. I appreciate that. This is what I expect from you guys. You don't have to go beyond the first part. Here, years, countable noun. Then much or many. Wonderful. So question is based on a countable noun. Uncountable, much. Countable, many. <laughs> Wonderful. I appreciate that. Many trees worldwide are already dying younger as a result of rising carbon dioxide levels and temperatures. Exactly, Anusha, you're right. Go to question number four.
many trees worldwide many trees where worldwide are uh, try to answer let's see how you guys take it as a result of rising rising is an important word temperature is also some students ask so can we use a uh, temperature in the plural form you can use nothing wrong wonderful madhav is the first one to get it right after that i see ruby i see tapa under pressure this is not easy they have given in a few exams all ready means all people are ready all in the group are ready are we talking about the group and the members of the group no already what is the right word here already dying younger that is the right word but this is an important one because they go with confusing words one is already refers to something going on or happened in the recent past and the other one all ready we all are ready to meet the director a different meaning altogether and whenever you come across a rise you have to recollect uh, two they have given so many times every time i tell you a rise and a raise this is an irregular verb it is an intransitive verb a raise is a regular verb and a transitive verb if you know this in the exam you can easily spot the error you may find these pillars easy but you got to be good at grammar and usually ssc you come across pillars same pattern try to get all the pillars if you are good at grammar you can get otherwise not easy if i were you be cautious with my language very good i see a lot of students have responded within no time the clue for you were if i were you it's a standard expression irrespective of the subject and you have to use would what is the answer here i would be cautious if i were the cm i would do something if i were the pm i would abolish something and many exams have given this pattern what is the function of this pattern it expresses wishes and desires i am not the cm then i may say if i were the cm i would abolish something if i were a bird uh, my typical example if i were a bird i would fly around the world very good venkatesh rama uh, this is a, a little challenging let's see if you get it of the two employees we hired last month i find ramesh hard working subject to mood very good technical term second one uh ruby says uh, second option suresh also says uh, second option very good here is a clue for you of the two employees then you have to use a comparative form most is a superlative form least cannot be used here only not relevant what is the answer of the two employees we hired last month i find ramesh more hard working but there is a problem here what is it of the two books this is the better here the is missing the more hard working here in this pattern we have to use a definite article the two times first and foremost and we have to use the ad adjective in the comparative form a lot of students wonder is this sentence right because already they have a fixed idea what is it the goes goes with the goes with the superlative form many exams have given of the two students he is the best answer my question is this right or wrong of the two students 
he is the best a lot of students may think this is right because the best perfect combination but this is wrong why is it wrong of the two students here the pattern it deals with comparative form but the pattern is different of the two students he is the better what is the right word here the better the better nothing wrong in this pattern <coughs> excuse me please go to question number three this see all these questions ssc pattern already given many a time the reason behind under pressure these are not easy here you are not under pressure but while taking the exam not easy do remember that way there are important questions and now in this session if you get these right that's wonderful because i'm not giving you enough time a live session he is so demanding that of the three houses was liked by him uh no 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 i'm surprised no 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 many students have said except rubina ruby answer she got it right it is a third option many students have said neither neither goes with two persons either goes with two persons but how many houses are we talking about two persons or two things how many are we talking about more than two then you cannot use either or neither you have to use none he is so demanding that none of the three houses and we have to use a singular verb was liked by him have you guys got it only one student after that i see some more devi varaprasad nan who else suresh also kalyani anusha all these shravanti naidu madhav wonderful that's what i said under pressure not easy this is easy for our students two decades the city has been prosperous present perfect not passive voice active voice has been and after that you can use an adjective or a noun usually a noun has been a student has been prosperous two decades refers to time period you have to recollect an important rule it goes with common errors have given so many times and uh, here i'm going to come to that it is there one of the questions that question is there how come who is this panindra how come that question uh, there are two important prepositions first one for for goes with time period 5 years 10 years two decades what is the other preposition these can be prepositions they can be conjunctions as prepositions this rule goes with specific time since monday since november since 2010 based on that answer is the first option i am really surprised where have you seen that it seems it sounds familiar oh i got it no it is wrong was gifted is correct i think you are talking about my mom was gifted something by my dad i think you are talking about that sentence who is that panindra so you have to use my dad gifted a gift or something to mom my mom was gifted was gifted passive voice today's question paper okay which question paper is it anusha anusha are you a student of uh, cce go to we have an important close test ah oh, nagesh yes yes i think i have to do it tomorrow anyhow you have a close test here you have to get the correct words blanks and uh, four words continuation next slide also hmm. oh i didn't know that i thought my online student online batch student or an academy student no problem no problem despite having huge and important uh, 
word off is not correct despite having huge strategic significance india's northeastern frontier has largely remained remained what marginal very good marginal means not part of the mainstream in the country's popular imagination as well as opposite marginal what is opposite mainstream these two words form one pair first one is remained marginal in the country's popular imagination as well as mainstream politics i'm sorry marginal is a fourth option and here first option mainstream politics oh you are there you were there good glad to know that the region has witnessed multiple crises including bloody bloody what insurgencies insurgency something like a revolt mutiny second word but still lacks the emotional of the kashmir conflict due to geographical cultural and ethnic factors answer is a resonance of the kashmir conflict very good continuation i hope you have answered all the four i will repeat here remain marginal as well as uh, mainstream politics bloody insurgencies and the last one it lacks the emotional resonance vibration continuation rooted in the politics of subnationalism of regional geopolitics these are a little challenging second slide no one has responded very good who is this rubina ruby first one rooted in the politics of subnationalism complex comma complexities of regional geopolitics here we have to use the fourth word complexities of regional geopolitics and the evolving dynamics of counter insurgency counter insurgency what insurgency here adjective and you have to use the right noun tactics please mention the blank number counter insurgency tactics the naga insurgency has defied means challenged defy means to challenge one of the meanings has defied a lasting solution it is an extraordinarily complicated conflict whose management has involved a mix of violent response and and what violent response a mix of violent response and bargaining answer is uh, who has got all correct the last one should be bargaining good that's all for today today i haven't brought the vocabulary editorial vocabulary because i did not do on saturday tomorrow you're going to but today not too many words all the eight wonderful triple sundari thanks for being with me till the fag end of the session today i think it's too early 48 I hope you guys have got enriched. Do remember to subscribe and share. Thank you very much.